Good evening, ladies and gentlemen in the hall. Um, I'd request the gentlemen at the back of the hall to settle down, please. All right. So we already know who's on the panel, um, thanks to this, as well as the announcement that Prasoon just went to ONM and a little bit of the impact of GST on the whole thing from the practical experience of the panelists here. So maybe what we'll do is we'll start off with uh, Mr. Poojan Doshi, who just made this interesting presentation on modules and the various technologies that have happened. And he's already given us uh, a perspective of what's going to happen. But if Poojan, you can tell about what is the next thing on the curve for inverters and inverter technology um, and throw some insights on that. Sure. Okay. Uh, so uh, from inverter technology, there are three particular type of inverters that are available today and are in use today. So one is, of course, the central inverter where we are seeing a lot of interest on the 1500 volt design and its application on the grid uh, at the 1500 volt level on the DC side, of course. So that is where the technology shift is going now, uh, where the developers are wanting to squeeze more power uh, from the inverter itself uh, on uh, by giving the DC side loading more and then getting the uh, AC power. So that's where this 1500 volt technology is now coming up, uh, even in India as well. We have seen few installations already done. On the string inverter, uh, the same technology is coming, but then there is a question of uh, you know balance between the uh, the uh, compactness of the inverter, the uh, lightweightness of the inverter versus the power capacity. So that is where the technology is currently working on to how to maintain a fine balance between those two questions. And the third, which is a very interesting technology, is micro inverter. Of course, it is being used worldwide, but India is now seeing some interest. Uh, where the end users of the developers are asking for micro inverters where they want to, uh, where they don't have that much amount of spare space to have a huge bulky inverter sitting in their house or their commercial premises. And they want to use this micro inverter to save not only on cost and uh, services, but also on the space, which is nowadays in cities is already a premium. So uh, this is the three uh, places where we are seeing a huge technology interest and a shift from the manufacturing side as well. It's very interesting. What we've also heard in the market and what's happening today is the modules are also undergoing a lot of technology changes. In fact, now we are hearing of modules which are giving AC output directly. So I'll ask Mr. Vyas to shed some light on modules or anything else on inverters, which is going to be the next game changer or the next big technology leap. Thank you very much, uh, Abhay. Uh, yes, uh, when we talk, and since morning we have been talking about uh, the subject of uh, photovoltaic uh, to deliver power. And when we say that we are talking about a PV solar system, uh, and also we, when we talked about GST and that it came out, that the value-wise and importance-wise, the most important uh, component in the whole system is the modules. and. Uh, it so happens that the people who have invested hugely into the technology of module uh, from the user perspective, they have reduced it to be a kind of commodity. That means he doesn't have to really think much. So uh, as a result, the people who are, though they are all very engineering people who are behind the installation and doing the design, but uh, basically it has been boiling down to the price part of it. Now, in this rat race of price, somewhere in Indian context, and in that much perhaps government and other buyers are also equally responsible, that in the rat race when we have thought of earlier grid parity and now trying to derive, derive every ounce out of it, I think the biggest casualty in the whole process has been the module selection. And in the process, what has happened is, uh, we are now looking at it, Chabis rupiah, pachis rupiah, you know, the, the, the whole thing is around, can I get 25 paise less or 50 paise less than the last? You know, this, is, this has been the mindset, which is up to a point okay, because we, you, are, you are in a fiercely competitive world. But let us 
for a moment think that India has to also think maybe 5% of the installations, maybe 2% of the installations of a technological jump. Because the good news is that uh, uh, photovoltaic technology uh, investment interest has not diluted. So uh, R&D works are continuously going on. People could have been contented when we started and I remember uh, in 2010, we used to talk of 200 to 220 watt modules in the same space of 1 meter by 1.6 meter. Today we are talking about 260 watt. So in that much there has been an upgradation which has been passed on and has been well received why? Because per watt cost has been coming down and it is not affecting. If suppose somebody says that 200 watt is available for 2 rupees less, some of the Indians may still think of 200 watt models. Now what happens is that the game changer you said, uh, to my mind like for example one game changer in utility sector has been tracker. How to get more uh, uh, you know uh, every ounce out of the uh, equipment. The same game changer if you really look at it. Uh, on rooftop and rooftop let us not get disheartened that uh, 40 gigawatt has reduced to 20 gigawatt. There is nothing like a boundary line that you cannot go beyond 20 gigawatt. So there is nothing stopping. It's only government's way of looking at it. So I think the rule of the game has remained unchanged as far as the rooftop uh, push is concerned because somebody said in the morning. Now the challenges in the rooftop are that what do you look at? Do you look at per watt price A? Do you look at per watt price per space? Now let us look at Nariman point in Bombay for example. Now what is very important? Is it that I want for, uh, let's say you can go for even that amorphous module and in a space you can put 30 kilowatt. But if you go for today's uh, uh, multi, uh, this thing at this line, you can put 45 kilowatt or 50 kilowatt. But if you go for some other technology, you can put maybe 60 kilowatt. So what is important? A, the capacity and second, the output. And third is the life expectancy and performance. A lot is happening, uh, as I said, that R&D investment continues to be there. And now the newer technologies, which I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to recap what has been discussed and a little elaboration. Uh, we have talked about PRC the bonding. Now PRC is nothing but passive uh, emitter rear uh, uh, side cell. Now what it does is that when light falls on the module, normal module which we are currently using uh, absorbs light energy from the front and whatever passes it gets lost. Now what you do is you also utilize a part of it. You cannot utilize much uh, a substantial part of it but a good part of it and PRC can do that job. Now there is another one called bifacial. Now bifacial and PRC appear to be uh, Ram and Sham but they are having some dot mark to differentiate. <laughs> you know, so mother can differentiate who is Ram and who is Sham. So, so bifacial uh, is uh, the one which is allowing the light to pass through the module and go to the surface behind and giving you an opportunity when it is possible for such application to improve the reflection of the back surface. If by using that, let us say you can color the surface, surface for best reflection. It is said that snow is the best reflector. So now if you can make a roof with bifacial with the uh, uh, bottom being white, then your performance goes up. There will be a nominal cost but let us for a moment think that just two years back or three years back we were paying say 32 rupees per watt per module and instead of 26 rupees if you have to pay 27 rupees, you can fork out that money. But this technological jump has got to happen. In the process what happens? as a student of electrical engineering, more you utilize, more is the efficiency, longer is the life. Because what is efficiency increase is also to be, the perspective is that drop is inefficiency. That means wasteful energy is reduced. Therefore, heating process is not that much around. So what happens is that the life also goes up. And by using these things, of course, the same way like 1500 volt DC, which was being talked about, the VOS cost goes down. So somewhere, maybe x percent increase in cost of the product but half x percent drop in overall cost also is supporting you. So these are some of the innovative uh, ways which I think as uh, EPC contractors we have to perhaps promote. Most of us who have been in EPC business or in the solar space in this country like somebody said that the three stages thing. People like us have been from the stage one where we had to promote solar, we, we were not being the business of solar, we were promoting solar because like somebody said proof of concept. 
people were uh, unsure whether the power will come out of this uh, thing you know so we had to do that now i think a second stage comes where we have to again take the responsibility of promoting the newer uh, wave newer generation of module also the associated many other things yeah i agree and and i think one clear differentiation between the way solar was adopted in india and the way it was adopted in china china was focusing only about capacity there was no focus on the generation per megawatt whereas i think that is one of the differentiations in india there is a focus on generation whether it's the seki subsidy or even the tenders which are coming out the more you generate the better it is the more likely you are um, and i think that is a great motivation to adopt the latest technologies and um, increase generation That's thanks right. for your thoughts on that and you mentioned tracker and i i see ritesh is sitting right next to you with uh, his insights on tracker etc but mainly my question to you ritesh is today trackers single access trackers have become a business case the adoption is going on worldwide what do you think will be the game changer in trackers so dual access definitely is not working out today but what do you think will change in the world of trackers in the next 3 to 5 years i think that's a tricky question to ask mm -hmm. i mean because if i knew that i mean we'd be deploying those technologies uh, currently what we are looking at is there is a lot of focus on panels but again quality of panels because of the focus on cost the bomb the quality of the bomb has dipped substantially while uh, i i'm just going to put this out there a lot of people claim that the same same bomb that is going to the us at 40 45 cents is the same bomb that's coming here but i was having a chat with a consultant he's saying the same tier 1 manufacturer has seven different workshops for seven different qualities so if you assume that you are getting quality the same quality somebody selling at 45 cents that you're getting at 30 cents then i think you're in for a shocker so that is something that you need to understand up front and that's the question that i've always had now our focus is only on price but price always comes at a cost of quality we need to move right now we have reached a certain level where you can make there are decent irs to be made but you can use different technologies to do that panel is definitely a technology is definitely the mainstay for solar because without the panel you can't generate electricity but there is a lot of optimization that can be done down the line in the bos in the uh, installations in the uh, the layouts there, there are some people who have come up with different trapezoidal layouts different things those maybe haven't caught on because as 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 a country as a country we 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 are all, we are quite laggard in absorbing new technology in the us 70% of new plants are coming up on trackers there they don't really uh, they don't skim on land they don't skim on a lot of things that you would see they they offer they say this is my price this is what i'm looking for this is the ir and this is the quality i need to get out of it so we have had a downward spiral focusing purely on quality on cost but that needs to stop somewhere and right now i think panels price increasing it is now making everybody think twice but tracking tracking makes tremendous sense both in the rooftop we are coming up with a rooftop project i mean product that will happen that's a little down the line because rooftop is a little tricky so every roof is slightly different you need to have a lot of there's a lot of thought process that goes in which is why roof installations are still very expensive compared to ground mounted but if you see the generation that you're getting from trackers you in some cases we are seeing uh cufs of average of 26 27% across the first half of the year so and we are actually matching wind wind cufs now there are good and bad technologies in trackers as well now we are seeing between 10 to 15% of the time plfs of 32% which is something that wind does now again that all depends on the quality of the module quality of the bos quality of the tracking system that you use you might think that you're saving a couple of bucks by maybe buying a cheaper panel but that impact is something that takes you throughout the life of the project so our our thought process i'm coming back to your question again the breakthrough overall i think is not only in trackers honestly i don't have that answer right now so let me be frank 
I don't know what that breakthrough is going to be. But I think the breakthrough that needs to really happen is just the cost, the cost mentality that we have. Everything is cost price, cost price, cost price. Are, ये पाँच लाख में था तुम मुझे साढ़े चार तुम मुझे चार लाख में दो तुम मुझे तीन लाख सो देन आदमी बोलता है अरे ले लेके जाओ ना फ्री फ्री में लेके जाओ अभी क्यों मांग रहे हो सो एट सम पॉइंट इन टाइम वी हैव टू वी हैव टू गो फ्रॉम अ कॉस्ट बेस्ड इकोनॉमी टू अ कॉस्ट प्लस क्वालिटी सो दैट इज समथिंग दैट विल सस्टेन इट सेल्फ फॉर द लाइफ ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स सो दैट्स द सेम थिंग वेन यू चूजिंग टेक्नोलॉजी बीट पैनल्स बीट ट्रैकर्स बीट बी ओ एस बीट इन्वर्टर्स सो that's that's i think that's the transformation that needs to come more than the technology that i see right now thanks a lot i think that's a good perspective so rather than thinking of what do we do next or what is going to happen next let's be practical let's realize everything comes at a cost and at least live in the moment that's a good suggestion and i think the way trackers are getting popular it's it's probably because you're using the same modules the same hd panels the same cables to get maybe like you said Five, six, twenty percent more generation, depending on where it's uh, happening. And I think we also have on the panel Mr. Sood, who's been working on energy storage for the last three, four years. And if we are having technologies which are pushing the generation to the next level, we already have twelve and a half gigawatt of solar and another tens of gigawatts of renewable energy getting added every year. We would need storage, and that's. the number one question that every developer is asking ntpc is trying out pilot projects so the the two questions i have for you sir is which is the most likely technology that you think will succeed in storage and what's the next breakthrough there thanks first of all let me tell you there is no one size fits all approach in energy storage fundamentally as far as the lead acid because lead acid battery is the most researched battery let me tell you in terms of history the the fight today is between lithium and lead acid batteries this afternoon somebody was asking me something about the lithium i just ask him one question i said do you know that even within lithium there are so many sub categories lithium happens to be one of because you know every battery has anode and cathode so along with lithium there are others so which lithium battery are you talking about is it lithium ion polymer is it lithium iron phosphate we have lithium sulfur so many other things so you know what is to, and then as far as the lead acid batteries is concerned the biggest uh, 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 the research which is happening i think you we all are aware of the graphenes and stannines the carbons nano carbon technologies they are already getting integrated into the lead acid batteries already globally there is a consortium it is called advanced lead acid battery consortium out of which let me tell you four members are only from china besides other countries so that means how serious they are considering this and there are already the three pilot projects on energy storage done in india let me tell you i don't know how many are aware the paper was it is a paper from central electricity authority the person driving that dr pc panth is the director in mnri these three pilot projects have been awarded and already running one is given to a chinese lead acid battery company one is panasonic one is lg so you know you have to understand that there's no going to be one size fits all approach we have to see what is the size of the project what are the climatic conditions where we are supposed to install it is transportation there a big concern you know like you spoke about flexible panels you know we are also going to assist our military to develop lightweight batteries many people are not even aware today that one of the leading organizations in india which is recognized globally i isro isro has already offered their lithium ion battery technologies to the indian industry and i heard recently tatas were the one first one of the first ones to approach them only thing is they have done it at a small level what we need to do is 
the production capability we have to develop that is where we are lacking so uh, now talking about the integration of solar and uh, renewable oh sorry storage does it make business sense yes in us in hawaiian islands which is similar to our andaman and nicobar you will be surprised this project has already been taken up under us department of energy and the price for this is only 11 cents now multiply 11 cents by the things and you come out at the, and you know in our india andaman and nicobar we are generate we are spending 15 to 16 rupees for the diesel generated power so look at the cost economics now so i think with this kind of a scenario there is a lot of potential here and the only thing is you know wo hamare usme kehte hain na ki hamare ghar pe jab barat aa jati hai tab hum dhol nagale bajate hain it has happened in our led industry because i am also vice president of led products manufacturing industry we have not invested in technology and science we need if you look at the us department of energy us department of energy besides policy initiative they invest in technologies and they encourage incubation companies this is something which i have been suggesting to our ministry of electronics and information technology unfortunately our industry i don't know how many of our solar energy uh, developers ever approach even the uh, ministry of electronics and information technology they are the one who are driving coming talking about electric vehicles department of heavy industries they are driving it the problem here is that unlike you know we we need something like us department of energy one secretary driving all these segments done so i think with this kind of things i can tell there's a definite business case and i will be very happy to you know partner with any company and one thing yes i forgot to mention here is being uh, uh, enthused by my ideas electronic sector skill council of india and ministry of electronics and information technology because you name anything to me today it doesn't have electronics so they are uh, they are supporting us and we are going to start centers of for excellence and renewable energy in all india bases and one such center in delhi is going to start very shortly within one to two months lastly just to sum up i am a guy who believes in disruptive technologies just like ola uber did to taxis i want to ask you people have been asking about discoms and why do we need a discom you name an application today which doesn't work on dc everything works on dc today why not give decentralized community based dc systems and i will give you the leads in foreign countries discoms are in trouble they have started campaigning against the renewable energy consumers without subsidy have got empowered by using their own and renewable energy and storage system that's my take on this thanks i'm i'm sure discoms are already feeling the heat um so so we are at that midpoint where we've kind of covered technology and sitting in the audience if you have any questions um you could jot it down and pass it forward to us and we'll definitely take each of those questions and address it at the end of it so i just wanted to make that announcement as a break between the onm um, panel discussion so any questions please write it down on a piece of paper and send it forward we'll definitely take it